Tampa Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC, Redefine, VCE, innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade, say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back, Jeff Frick here at EMC World 2014. We're here for our fifth year in a row of the Cube being at EMC World, and we're doing something a little special this year. We've actually got two cubes, so double the fun, double the pleasure, double the great guests that we're going to have on over the next three days. We invite you to stop on by. We're right next to the social lounge, the alumni lounge, this big giant TV with more bean bags than I've ever seen. So stop on by the Cube, uh, and we'll be here for the next three days. I'm joined here with my special guest host, Steve Keniston. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for uh, passing that over. Steve Keniston, the storage alchemist. Again, as Jeff said, we're here live in Las Vegas at the Cube. Beautiful setup here, and uh, EMC's doing a great job. But enough about us, let's get to our guests. Joined here by Bart Schertz, who, uh, some pretty interesting background. Principal engineer for, for EMC out of uh, EMEA, yep. and uh, gave us a little interesting piece of information, has a blog. Let's see if we can help yep. up your blog count here. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's dirty cool. Cash. Tell dirty us, cash, give, yes. give us a little bit about what is what is Dirty Cash? <laughs> so, so Dirty Cash actually started as a bit of a joke. I was looking for a name for my blog. And because I'm, you know, I, I like to help my customers saving money, so there is some, you know, cash involved. Ah. And in the in the late 90s, there was a, a song called Dirty Cash with, uh -huh. the, you know, the different a different spelling. Uh -huh. I said, hey, I like that team. And, and dirty cache is also, basically, technically it means data that is in memory, it hasn't been written to disk yet, but it's, I like the, you know, the dual. The, the double on yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like the, the so sound. So very effect. interesting, maybe getting yeah. heard here on theCUBE, it'll up your hits and yeah. you know, it'll, drive, it'll drive cool. some counts. So cool. you were telling us a little bit, you're an Oracle specialist. Yeah. Why don't you give us a little bit of uh, insight as to what's going on with Oracle? You talked about yeah. Oracle and the cloud. Yes and yep. uh, Oracle in, in, in Europe in general. Why don't yep. you give us some insight? Okay, so um, so one of the things that, that I have been doing the, over the last probably five years or so uh, is talk to customers about the benefits of you know, moving Oracle to private clouds. Um, and I would say probably five years ago, this was kind of like a no-go area. You could, you could talk to DBAs and they would say, oh yeah, but it's not supported, and there's performance overhead, and you know, hell breaks loose if you try to do that, right? So I would say probably three years ago, it started changing a little bit. So now, uh, what I see now at my, in my customer base is that uh, uh, customers are actually virtualizing their databases. They are conservative, and I, I don't blame them. So that what they do is they start with test and development, and then slowly move it on a virtual platform mostly VMware, but others too. And they, they just try to, to get a grip on it, get, get the tools in place, get some confidence, and then slowly move on. I also have a few customers. Uh, I, I was hoping for more you know, in, going onwards in the future that would go all the way. So some of our customers are putting mission-critical production databases on VMware. That's interesting. And they, they solved all the issues around support and certification and, and what do you have to do if Oracle finds an issue? Do you have to put it you know, back on a physical system? They, they have figured it out completely. So, um, so that's interesting. we have, you know, this, we're, this show is really about the, the users, the industry yep. practitioners. Yep. Uh, some great insight, helping us to understand uh, what, can you help us dive into, what are some either best practices that you've learned along the way, or, or some of the right first steps to try to start to take as you're thinking about putting your, your Oracle database into the cloud? So, well, like I said, the first thing you have to do is start start conservative, be, be you know, be, and be, be very, you know, slow moving, just test it out, make sure the tools are in place. If you, if you would go like migrate the whole thing at once, then you probably had some issues down the road. So that's one. Second thing, make sure that, uh, and this is a very important one, uh, Oracle is very keen on licensing. They have audit policies and, and stuff like that. So I always tell my customers before you even consider to virtualize database, make sure that your licenses are in place, that, you, that you're compliant with the Oracle license policy and all that, it's, that's critical. If you're not in compliance, then you might have some severe issues later. Didn't Suddenly, you have to license stuff. the whole farm if you make the wrong uh, the wrong choices. So very good, very good. Any yeah. any um, have you happened to see, especially in Europe, any particular uh, industry verticals that have chosen to do this first over another one? Or? Um, so one of the first customers, and it's actually a reference uh, customer in in Luxembourg, uh, which was a financial, one of the banks. And they, uh, probably three or four years ago even, they completely virtualized everything, including the financial transaction processing systems. Yeah. So this was pretty, 
you know, pretty innov innovative, I would say. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. So, yeah. what are you seeing with hybrid clouds and public clouds um, and interacting with the? Uh, yeah. So with their own cloud, how's that working? So the public cloud is an interesting one. I mean, everybody talks about it. So of, 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 of course, it's very interesting to see how that goes with the cost savings and all that. Uh, on the other hand, Oracle applications are typically the uh, the core values of a of a company. I mean, if something goes wrong with that with that Oracle databases and the applications on top of it, I mean, then you know, worst case, company could go out of business. So customers are very conservative. So. They will probably deploy on a on a on a private cloud, maybe hybrid, if if the, if the hybrid partner is uh, an outsourcer that they trust. Um, I don't see them. Uh, uh, not one of my customers going to the public cloud, except maybe for test and development and some some small stuff. But the, the real core mission critical database processing, it's all on, either on private or maybe on hybrid cloud. And then what about some of the other kind of new age uh, databases? Is any of that workload being passed on or they really keep it locked in on Oracle for you those mean, core you assets? The, you, you mean the non-Oracle databases? Or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't My SQLs well, and the Mongos and you know, we're here, so, we go to a lot of shows, we hear about all kinds of crazy <laughs> databases. And, and uh, yeah. you know, I know a lot of them are kind of different focused, they're yep. coming at it from more web yep. scale and you know, kind of not core financials and those kind of things. But I'm just wondering if, if, if those are getting any traction uh, in what has traditionally um, been an Oracle I, space I, I, in your I, world, I couldn't really comment on that because you know the, the the customers I talk to, and especially the groups within my customers, those are the guys who manage the hardcore mission critical legacy applications, and they are doing innovative things. But they, you know, other groups are probably doing the MongoDB and the Hadoop stuff. Okay, and, uh, it, but then on the licensing piece, which you mentioned, yeah. are are they finding that to be a relatively neutral transaction cost-wise when they move from um, the regular licenses to the that, virtualized, that, or how's that kind of working out in practice? Well, that's that's an interesting thing, and this this is one of the main reasons why I, uh, I talk to my customers about virtualization. Um, uh, many databases that are physically deployed have a very low CPU utilization. Now, Oracle is, is in, I would say, 90% of the cases is licensed by CPU core, and it's pretty expensive. and. Uh, Probably, as you know, uh, 70 to 80 percent of a database stack, the cost of it is made out of licensing and support on those licenses. So, if if my database stack is expensive and 80 percent of that cost is in Oracle licensing, and that 80 percent is only utilized for 20 percent, you right. can see how many dollars I am basically wasting at that point. And why do customers have to do it? They have to do it because they, you know, in a physical world, you have to size for peak loads and for future growth. So you have to oversize your server, right, therefore right. the average utilization is low. Now one of the things you can do with virtualization is basically glue all those CPU resources together and now you have kind of like a, you know, a cloud, if you will. Right, right. That cloud allows you to move workloads and, and set CPU shares and all of that stuff. So now every database can use all of the CPUs in the farm. And by doing that and, and using some, some specific uh, workload management techniques, you can drive up utilization from, and, I, and I'm always conservative. I said, well, best case in the physical environment, you can do 20%, virtual 50%. Well, that means you can throw away more than half of your CPU cost. Right, right. Mr. Customer, what can you save right. by? Or reinvest it in something else, right? <laughs> EMC. <laughs> Larry doesn't want us to throw it away. Just, I know, we'd rather I have know, you invest it in some and new And that's, some a, new, that's, uh, that's a tension, and that's also why Oracle <laughs> is pushing back a little bit. And, I can understand it. I mean, that's that's how it goes. Yeah. But, uh, so, Bart, tell yeah. us a little bit. Have you? Is this your first DMC World? How many times have you been DMC? World? Uh, I have been actually to the very first one that was still called uh, Wizards Conference in 2001. Wow. So and big. actually, actually, there was one before, which was kind of like an internal dry run in yeah. the late 2000, I believe, in Orlando, with uh, a group called the Speed Geeks, who were kind of like the performance wizards in EMC. Yeah. So I was part of that too. And in all those years, I probably missed two or three, but I was at most of them. Yeah. Some excellent history. So tell us a little bit about what do you think of the show so far, and, and primarily, right. what do you what are you here to come find out? Well, so the, <laughs> so the first the first thing you know, if I if I look over all these years, is how enormously it has been growing. I mean, that, that first Wizards conference was like I don't know, maybe maybe less than a thousand people. I don't know how much. Oh, wow. it was. Yeah. And now you look at this. Wow. <laughs> we could fit a thousand so, people. We have more than a thousand yeah. beanbag chairs, yeah. I think, over yeah, there. Yeah, that, that could easily. Fit, that, that whole thing could fit easily in there. So that's. Uh, and it's also, I mean, the, the, the social media has, in, has influenced a lot. Back then, you didn't even well, you had a mobile phone, and that's about it. And, right. And everybody was, you know, closed down, talking to each other. And now everybody is right. publishing it out to the world. So that has been, you know, pretty big difference over the last few years. Um, yeah, 
many more different uh, uh, focal groups. So you have people dealing with documentum, with you know, content management. You have people doing you know the new database stuff, and there, there is so much more different. Uh, technology and application areas. Back in those days, it was all about you know one storage box and driving as much as performance out of it as possible. And that right. was it. Right. And now look at look at you know how big the portfolio has gone. How many even storage arrays? Not even talking about application. How many different platforms we have and how hard it must be for customers to select the right one. And then you talk about applications. And uh, so, what did you bring, come here with any customers? Anything specific you came to learn or um, share with them or help them understand? To your point, there's a lot of different things EMC has. Uh, so well, so in, in my role, I don't have my own customers anymore. So I used to do that in the past, and now I'm just helping my my colleague EMC guys to help their customers with with Oracle. I see. Um, so uh, what did I learn? Uh, Good point. So, uh, well, to start with, the acquisition was pretty impressive today. Impressive, that was kind of yes. like, wow, <laughs> another, <laughs> another another acquisition. Yeah, I thought I thought we had the whole portfolio covered, and so yeah, there's another one. That's cool. So, uh, and what what's interesting to see, and this, I mean, I've been with EMC for about 14 years, so I'm I'm I've seen a long track record, and and EMC is always interesting in that sometimes they do an acquisition of a company you might have never heard of. Right. And then it stays silent for a few years, and then suddenly, boom, they come up with a new product based on that acquisition, right. and it, it, it rocks the market. So and that's something that's very impressive. Before we let you go, I want to, you know, we usually don't go super deep into the okay. weeds no, here. We should, but, 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 I, but I'm curious, because you said, before we uh, went on, that you like to go deep into topics, yep. and you really like to explore yep. them, and it's not yep. just the light coverage on your yep. blog. So, not so much that we want to get super deep in the weeds, but what are a couple of the one or two uh, things that you are covering on your blog from a real deep technical perspective that people need to be aware of or sh oh. should seek more information or that um, you know are a point of interest for you so right now? I, I, would, I would say the number one topic that my customers ask for is performance on databases. And, uh, so I, I have a, a, a specific tab on my blog. If you click on it, you get all my all my Oracle database performance related blogs. Uh, last year I did a uh, I was actually co-presenter at Oracle Open World, so I presented on best practices and, and, and real world experiences. I don't want to talk about you know the million eye ops and all that right, stuff. But, right. you know, what's going on on the customer data center floor and you know what, what happens over there and how do you set it up correctly? How do you deal with misbehaving applications? Uh, Stuff like that. So that's that's one of them. Uh, there is a there is a couple of blog posts uh, dealing with some Linux stuff. So so real hands-on stuff. I did a post on uh, well actually uh, uh, some some things on file systems. What's the best file system for Oracle? And what's the worst? Maybe. <laughs> uh, so uh, stuff like that. And then I go. I, I just don't make a statement. Hey, this is a good one. This is a bad one. I right. try to explain with real world. You know, examples, I do a test on my home server and I, I show them the output and say, hey, this is going on. That's great. Yeah. And so a lot of people get in there, I mean, what are, what's the biggest uh, screw up on a config that people use that just bogs your system down? This is, biggest screw should up? Should be uh, um, no bread, you know, what are you doing? Clearly. Well, if, you, if you want to go real deep technical. <laughs> <laughs> I had one customer once who, uh, who migrated to EMC from a competitor. And then complained about lousy performance, and that's and then of course we get the blame as EMC. So I was flew in at the, at the evening before and just you know, hop on a plane and try to solve some issues. And you know, long story short, I found that there were two components in their database stack that that happened during the migration. They went to a different file system, and they went to a different way of doing I/O load balancing. And both of these components were breaking large I/Os. So you have a like a 128k I/O. Both of these components were breaking the IOs in very small 4K pieces. Now, from Oracle, the response the response time goes goes up because you basically have to wait for all of these individual IOs to finish before IO complete is sent back to the database. And on the storage level, you have uh, 25 times as much of the IOs, and all of the IOs complete within half a millisecond. So, the database guys have a complaint, and the Oracle guys say, "Well, yeah, but we're doing lots of IO, and everything is you know low latency, so we're all cool." And that, and that is a typical problem, you know, in the communication between the database guys and the others. So make sure that you know what you're talking about, what's going on. Uh, that is there any translation going on? Is there any any layer that is messing up your your performance? Yeah, that's what I often talk about. So good, yeah. good. Well, Bart, thanks for stopping by. No problem. You're welcome. Everybody, jump on board. Read Dirty Cash. Give yep. Bart some feedback. Thank give him a hard problem. He likes to solve yeah, it. And if I it's like hard it. enough, cool. he'll jump on a plane. He'll come out to visit you. So we are uh, <laughs> worst getting case. <laughs> worst case. Hopefully not. But that's all right. Yeah. That's job yeah, security cool. for Bart. We like sure. that. 
So we're here at VMworld uh, 2014, here at um, the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, fifth year for theCUBE, two cubes at one time. We've got a full uh, slate of guests lined up for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so keep it tuned here. We'll be back after this short break with our next guest.